Good evening everyone, I am Remy Saseda and I am here in front of your screen to continue the discussion. My topic for this evening are the following. The first one, methods in making lesson plan for writing. The second one, teaching strategies. And lastly, the principle of writing. Without further ado, let's get started with the method of making a lesson plan for writing. I will give you two methods, the inductive method and deductive method. So, what is inductive method and deductive method? Now, allow me to discuss you the word inductive method and deductive method. Inductive method is more a bottom-up approach, moving from specific to more general, in which we make specific observations, detect patterns, formulate hypotheses, and at the end, draw conclusions. For example, the teacher should include first the easy subject matter before proceeding to the difficult one in making her lesson plan. The second method is the deductive method. Deductive method is essentially a top-down approach which moves from more general to more specific. In other words, we may begin the lesson with a general motion or theory which we then narrow down to specific hypotheses which are then tested. For instance, in this method, the teacher may put some questions to the students in her or his lesson plan which are related to the subject matter. During the lesson proper, it helps the teacher to know what and how much the students already know about the certain topic. And accordingly, the teacher can proceed to the rest of the lesson which the students do not know. It means that the teacher connects the new knowledge to the old knowledge in order to have a sequential order. Let's proceed for the next topic. The next topic is teaching strategies in the components of the lesson plan. The first teaching strategy is the problem solving. Problem solving usually done in the discussion portion of the lesson plan. So problem solving, this strategy reflects general rules for developing skills used in solving problems such as the teacher required the students to write an essay form about solutions for the said problem. Example, the problem is lack of vocabulary so students will write and express the solution through writing. In this process, the teacher develops a problem and carefully assess the skills needed to solve the problem and creates a condition or parameters that act as guidelines for the said solution. The same condition and parameters also serve as the evaluation criteria. Next teaching strategy is the inquiry approach. Inquiry approach usually done under developmental activities in the component of the lesson plan. Inquiry approach referred to as facilitation plans or strategy to help teachers remember their role as facilitator of learning rather than font of all wisdom. So this notion also helps teachers structure lessons more loosely to allow students answer the questions in writing format in order to drive the learning process without derailing it. Now, let's continue for the third strategy, the 5E. So what is 5E? It can be seen in the procedure component of the lesson plan. So it includes the progressive stages of engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. Let me define first the word engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. So let's start with engage. Engage establish a purpose of the lesson, which means it encourage the students to actively participate on your discussion. Next is the exploration or the explore. In making lesson plan, take note of this. In the discussion of the new concept, you need to uh, you need to know or to discover the new skills of the students 
to be applied using your techniques in teaching. Then the next one is explanation. Explanation develop mastery leading to formative assessment. So, so with this, students can explain and express their thoughts and ideas because they are guided with your lesson plan. And the second one, elaboration or elaborate. Find practical application of concepts and skills in daily living. Make generalization and abstractions about the lesson. And lastly, evaluation. It assess their learning. This strategy is used for many approaches. At first look, this looks like a good model for hands-on student-centered instructional learning. But in critical sense, it is used as a linear progression. Now let's proceed for the fourth strategy, the 7E. 7E can be seen in the procedure components of the lesson plan. The 7E was an extension of the 5E learning approach or strategy. 7E expanded, expanded to ensure teachers don't leave out any essential instructional components. And there are two added in the 5E. And these are uh, elicit. It is added to review the previous lesson or present the new lesson. Then the other added is the extent. Additional activities for application or remediation. So much for that, let's go for the highlights of this report. The writing skill. Let me ask you, what is writing? Writing is the art of deforming letters and words, or it is a skill of making coherent words and characters in composing a text. Since our topic is about lesson plan of writing, we need to write or to practice our writing skill in order to develop and improve us to become a better communicator. For you to know, there are five principles of writing. The first one is appropriate content for the audience. First thing to do is to know your audience in order to help you to make decisions about what information you should include, how you should in arrange that information, and what kind of supporting details will be necessary for the reader to understand what you are presenting. So, before writing, ask first these following questions. Who is the intended recipient of this context? Does your content applicable for your potential readers? Why it is important to identify our audience to make appropriate content? In writing, we need to be aware of the target audience in order to write accurately. For instance, if your target readers are adults, you should write a content good for them. But if the subject matter of what you are writing is not applicable for them like children's story and the readers are adults, so you did not achieve the appropriate content for your audience. Did you get my point? So if you don't identify first your audience, it affects what the content of what you are writing and you will struggle to communicate with the information you want to deliver through the writing process. Next principle is focus on purpose and unity in paragraph. The main points of the writer should be evident inside the paragraph. Focusing on the main idea or concept is the key to understand what you are writing and what you want to address. When we say focus, it refers to the main point and the purpose of what you are writing. It signifies the sticking to the point involves having a clear idea of what you want to write and how you want to write about your topic. Let's proceed for the continuation of the second principle, which is the unity in paragraph. Each composition should concentrate in one idea that expresses in topic sentences. Well, because unity in paragraph helps the reader to understand that the other idea is connected with each other and all parts of the writing work to achieve same goal. The third principle is organization. Coherent arrangement of materials. It involves keeping the reader oriented to the central and subordinate ideas. 
Organizing our thoughts in writing help us to identify easily what the topic is all about. That's why every piece of writing has introduction, body, and conclusion. For that example, if you as an author and you write something that is not arranged well, the readers will become confused of the flow of your literary piece. As writer, it is needed to do organizational pattern because readers expect what they read to make sense logically. Now let's continue for the fourth principle, the development of sentence structure. In English grammar, development of sentence structure is the arrangement of words, phrases, and clauses in a sentence. The most common structure is the subject, verb, object. Sentence structure is essential to good writing. It adds both clarity and interest. It means that you follow the syntax procedure, which is the study of the sentence structure. Now let's proceed for the fifth principle, the word usage. Choosing words that convey your meaning as precisely as possible and capture your attitude toward your subject. Choosing word is important because it creates a great impact for your readers. That would be all and I thank you. God bless you all.